How many last layer cases are there? This is a question that I see a lot, but the answer that the cuber is seeking tends to differ from one situation to another. It really depends on how you define the word case. In this video, I'll be covering four of the most common numbers that people are looking for. Hopefully this video answers whichever of the questions you are asking, so let's begin. The first number, and probably the most extreme upper bound, represents the number of ways the last layer can exist if it is dismantled and then randomly put back together. This is done by simply multiplying the permutation and orientation of all the pieces. I'll go over each of them one at a time. For corner permutation, you have four corners and four places where they can go. You can put any of the four corners in one of the positions, any of the three remaining in the next position, and so on. So this is represented by four factorial. Each of the four corners can be at any of three orientations, so this is represented by three to the fourth. The logic for edge permutation is the same as the corners, so it is also four factorial. However, an edge can only exist at one of two orientations, so this is just two to the fourth. Multiplying these out gives you 746,496. This will be our first number represented by A. With this first number, you should keep in mind that it does not mean very much, since the majority of these cases are not solvable. For our second number, we will cut out all of the unsolvable cases. This is fairly simple, since we just need to divide by all the parities that make the last layer unsolvable. Since you can't just twist one corner, we need to divide by three, since the orientation of the final corner is decided by the other three. Same logic applies for edges, but this is only two. The last parity is simply the permutation parity, representing how only half of edge cases crossed with corner cases are actually solvable. Think like PLL parity on 4x4 for this. So when you multiply these out and divide, you get the remaining 62,208 cases that are actually solvable. This will be our second number represented by B. Since all these cases are solvable, this might seem like a good place to stop. However, this number does not tell you very much either, based on the way we solve for it. A good example of this is shown by the fact that a last layer skip off by a quarter turn AUF and a last layer skip off by a U2 AUF are treated as two separate cases. To deal with this, we will divide by the AUFs, which is just four, to give us 15,552, or the number of unique cases. This will be our third number, and it will be represented by C. Before we move on to the confusing part, let us first review the numbers that we have so far. A represents every possible case, regardless of whether or not it is solvable. B represents all the solvable cases, but two cases may only be separated by an AUF. C represents only the cases themselves, but does not check for similar cases at different orientations. If you do not use any sort of edge control, winter variation, or ZBLS, then your likelihood of getting a last layer skip in a given solve is 1 over C. Does this also mean that your likelihood of getting any specific last layer case is also 1 over C? The answer is simply no. Not all last layer cases have the same likelihood of occurring. The chance of a last layer case showing up is based on symmetry. For the purposes of this video, there will be three different types of symmetry that I will define for now. Full symmetry, half symmetry, and irrelevant symmetry. Any case that is the same from every angle is considered to have full symmetry. Any case that is only the same from two angles is said to have half symmetry. Lastly, any case that is different from all four angles falls into the irrelevant symmetry category. I will try to demonstrate to you through an easy example. Consider the number that we used B to represent. There are a total of four last layer skip cases here, one at each AUF. Now we'll compare that to the number of OLL skip T-perm cases. Since the T-perm can be done at any of four orientations, and those orientations can be shifted to any of four AUFs, there are a total of 16 of these, making it four times more likely than a last layer skip. The reason for this is simply that the last layer skips do not exist at other orientations because it would just be the same case. Ultimately, the cause of this is the full symmetry that the last layer skip has, while the OLL skip T-perm falls into the irrelevant symmetry category. Now we need to split our OLL and PLL cases up into their correct symmetry categories and consider the effect of crossing them. Since we already have A through D occupied with our numbers, I will use E through J to avoid confusion. E through G will represent the PLL cases, while H through J will represent the OLL cases. There are exactly four PLL cases with full symmetry. These consist of the PLL skip, the H perm, and both N perms. These are the E category cases. There are only two PLL cases that have half symmetry. These are the E perm and the Z perm. These will be the F category cases. 
The remaining 16 PLL cases have irrelevant symmetry and will therefore be G category cases. There are only two OLL cases with full symmetry. These are the OLL skip and checkerboard case, which will be in the H category. There are five OLL cases with half symmetry, double soon, runway, highway, streetlights, and mummy. Be sure to visit the speed solving wiki if you are unfamiliar with these terms. These are the I category cases. The remaining 51 OLL cases all fall into irrelevant symmetry and therefore will be placed in the J category. Now as we cross the cases, you will see why they had to be split up in the first place. The symmetry factor is represented by the star and changes based on what is being crossed. Just try to imagine one of the cases from both parts being crossed and you will see why they make sense. For example, if you cross an H perm with a checkerboard OLL, there is only one case that can exist and it does not matter which angle you look at it. However, if you cross a J perm with a soon, both are unique from each angle so you must multiply by 16. If you add up all the products on the right column, you get exactly 15,552, the same as our number for C. This means that our math must be correct since we did it from the top down and the bottom up, both giving us the exact same value. Now that we have checked our math, we can change the symmetry factor to allow us to find how many actual algorithms we need to be memorized in order to know every last layer case. If we take our new products on the right column and add them up, we get 3,916. This means that if you learned one last layer algorithm every day, it would take you over a decade to know full last layer. This will now be our final number represented by D. Even though the number should technically be 3,915, if you subtract the last layer skip, which you don't actually need to learn an algorithm for. That's it for this video. Hopefully you understand these four numbers and one of them answers whichever question you came into this video asking. I use some advanced terminology in this video, so if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment or check the speed solving wiki. I hope you all learned something from this video.